Jai Shri Ram. We've all seen a couple days ago the unfortunate story of the lynchings in the Amritsar Golden Temple that happened, uh, I believe, three days ago. Now, I wanted to wait a few days to talk about this because I wanted to make sure that I could read all of the different uh, news stories that came out about this online, uh, in English, of course. And I didn't want to kind of have a knee-jerk reaction or base my opinions off of the knee-jerk first responses of people that were trying to write about this as fast as they can to get a story out there. And what I found was basically a couple interesting things. One, the initial story we heard was this person got lynched for desecrating the Guru Granth Sahib. Right now, if you look at this video, which has, you know, clips of this video are out there on all the news networks, the guy g j jumps over this railing and it, it doesn't look like he's trying to step on the Guru Granth Sahib or spit on it or anything like that. He is going towards a sword, picks up the sword, and then before he can do anything with the sword, he's grabbed by a group of the people that are around him. So it's not really clear if he intended to uh, harm someone in particular with that sword or harm, you know, anyone indiscriminately with the sword or if he was trying to steal the sword or what was going on there because he never had an opportunity to do whatever he intended to do because he was apprehended. Now, again, the initial stories that came out just said that he was lynched. Then, as I waited a little bit, a day or two, what I started to see was a somewhat different story from uh, some of the sources that were giving more information, which was that the group of people that you see grabbing him in the video, they grabbed him, put him in a room, and locked that door. Then another group of people who were assumed to just be kind of six were visiting the Golden Temple, they saw this or knew about it and became angry at it. They busted open the door and just, you know, in a mob mentality, lynched this guy. Which I think is, you know, that's a very important difference to, uh, distinction to make, excuse me, because it's the difference between people who are working at an institution that is very sacred and holy to this religion conspiring to murder someone versus, you know, mob mentality taking over for a group of people who is already pretty kind of on edge and volatile and prone to use violence in general, at least that's what I basically think of that community. Um, so that's a very different thing. Now, the other thing to, that I found, I mean, I don't want to say amusing, but I found kind of, you know, this is just par for the course and people are going to take this and craft some kind of narrative about it, which is that you only see that people are condemning the so-called sacrilege or the so-called desecration People are not really condemning the fact that this person was murdered. And, you know, I think that, again, people understand that you can't really make the six mad. They take this very seriously. They're willing to murder people in order to protect the honor of this thing that they hold very sacred uh, in their religion. And so, you know, you have to always condemn whatever they think is a sacrilege or desecration or whatever the case may be. Navjot Singh Sidhu said that he wanted to pass some law that, uh, like, desecrating any item of any religion would be, you know, you'd have, you'd be thrown in jail for, like, 30 years or something like that. I mean, obviously, whenever Navjot Singh Sidhu says something, it's very excited and emotional, and you don't know if he means half of the things that he's saying. But... This is the general kind of uh, sentiment that you got, that got put out there, that this desecration or sacrilege or whatever the case may be is wrong and evil and it needs to be condemned. And you know what? If people felt that they wanted to take the law into their own hands, that's just what happens. Um, again, not shocked. You, It doesn't really make sense to have a higher standard for this community of people in terms of they need to follow the law and... Uh, you know, they just need to hold on to this person and let the authorities deal with it. Because, I mean, let's be honest. Do we really, if we're going to be honest with ourselves and think clearly, is that really something that you see happening with this group of people? Uh, let me just ask that open-ended question and just leave it there. Now, the other thing that I wanted to talk about with regard to this particular story was Preet Gill, who is a uh, an MP in the United Kingdom... She put out a tweet saying that this person was a quote-unquote Hindu terrorist. And she was saying that this is a great thing that, you know, the Sikh religion has been heroically 
defended from this Hindu terrorist or whatever. Now, there two things there. One, this is a totally unhinged kind of a statement, in my opinion, because I don't really see how you can take someone committing some act, which it's not even clear what the act specifically was that he was trying to do because he wasn't really able to do it. And two, that he's a Hindu and motivated by the fact that he's a Hindu somehow, as if Hinduism wants you to go desecrate sick places of worship. From all the things that I've seen, it's not even clear if the guy was a Hindu, a Sikh, or Christian, or uh, whatever the case may be. So, again, I think that I'm not really surprised by the fact that this kind of an opinion is out there, but it is notable to make, uh, to kind of draw attention to the fact that, look, there are people out there that believe this. And of course, there are people on our side that want to say she should apologize, she should, you know, this and that, which those people are missing the entire point. Because the problem that you have is there is a section of the Sikh community, at least in the diaspora, that feels this way about the Hindus in India. Not that one of those people who is in a prominent place chose to actually make a statement about it publicly. That kind of a sentiment exists whether Preet Gill had tweeted that or not. So that those are basically my thoughts on this issue with that uh, video clip. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Now, there was also another incident that happened, which was like a day or two after this first one. And... That one, I think, is uh, even more troubling than this initial incident because the only video clip that's out there of this is when the guy is actually being beaten. You see a video clip of this guy being chained up uh, outside, outdoors, and he's being beaten by a guy with a rod. And he's, you know, wailing out for help and, you know, in pain and so on. And this was another claim of desecration. I don't, I'm not sure if he desecrated the Guru Granth Sahib or the Nishan Sahib, which is that triangular flag that Sikhs have outside of the Gurudwara, because I've seen uh, reporting that has said both of those, so I'm not sure which one. But my knee-jerk reaction to this, which is also my thoughtful you know, reaction after a period of time has happened, is also that I don't believe that any desecration happened in the second incident whatsoever because we have one we haven't seen any evidence of it. Two, I don't understand what kind of a motive someone would have to desecrate a sick item of, you know, sacred item or place of worship or anything like that. Three, if you take this idea that if someone desecrates your religious objects, then you have the right to go kill them. Uh, then you're basically opening the door to saying, well, anybody desecrated this, anybody desecrated that. And that's why I did, you know, whatever I did. Like this is, you know, this is the kind of thing that happens in Pakistan where, you know, Muslim has some kind of property dispute or some other kind of personal issue with some Hindu. And they claim that this Hindu has blasphemed against the prophet muhammad and then now this person is subject to some blasphemy laws when one he didn't commit blasphemy two it's a totally uh mundane kind of an issue that had nothing to do with religion that these people got uh caught up into a conflict in and now this person is you know in jail or being executed or whatever the case may be basically because he's a hindu so you know, I, I would say that any time someone tells you someone desecrated X, therefore we took the law into our own hands and did something to them, they just shouldn't be believed. Don't even entertain the thought that this actually happened. And I want to end on this, which is, you know, going backwards, going making a uh, reference back to the first story, which is that it looks like the guy was trying to take the sword. I mean, that's all it looks like. It doesn't look like he was trying to throw anything down or kick anything or step on anything. When I think of desecrating a holy object, running across a thing and trying to steal a sword is not really what I think of when I, when I think of that. Maybe that's my own bias because I'm not a Sikh. I've never been a Sikh. I have been inside several different Gurudwaras before, though. So I do understand, like, 
where the Guru Granth Sahib is and, you know, what else is kept in that area, so on and so forth, because Gurudwaras are largely pretty similar uh, within those respects. But those are basically the things that I wanted to draw people's attention to. The, the fact that the lynching is not being condemned, but only the so-called sacrilege is being condemned, whether or not this thing really was sacrilege or not, uh, the fact that you have this kind of anti-Indian, anti-Hindu kind of a sentiment that exists in a lot of the uh, diaspora six, and also the fact that this kind of desecration, sacrilege kind of a narrative can be easily used by people that are just trying to even the scores with someone for something that actually has nothing to do with religion whatsoever, but is just a totally mundane, personal kind of issue. So that's all I've got for you guys today. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Jay Shreedham.